Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Soundcraft Studios. Visit online at soundcraftstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with four terrific guys in a lovely studio somewhere in Connecticut. Um, he's backed by a well known Connecticut musician of 50 plus years, guitarist and uh, lead singer. And uh, this gentleman began at seven at for a love for doo-wop and also influenced by the Prees, Larry Chance and the Earls, Danny and the Juniors, and uh, also got the Penguins and uh, little Anthony Imperials and a lot more. And of course, uh, he also formed um, a new group and very popular in the tri-state area featuring Joe Carver, the founding member and bassist. We also got Paul Scungio, the vocalist and keyboardist, Al Floyd, we got the drummer and baritone, and of course, we got the very, very amazing guitarist and lead singer, part of the Jukebox 45, and we also got the CD, which is Jukebox 45, Do What Memories, and uh, it's great, guys. So, before getting all that, uh, we got Jerry Fanfarelli and their group. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, thanks for joining us today. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Okay, good guys. Evening. Oh, yeah, it's great to have you on board. So uh, before we begin, let's go around the room. We got um, Joe, the founding member and bassist, and uh, like to tell you uh, how you got started. Okay, I, I grew up in the church. Uh, my, my parents were ministers, and so music was just a big part of what we did. Uh, it was very routine. Uh, we played uh, every service, so we got a lot of uh, playtime in three services a week normally. So uh, I enjoyed playing music early on. And then when uh, when I got older, sort of experimented with different styles of music. But uh, when I met these guys, uh, first met Jerry, uh, we knew pretty, pretty early on uh, which direction we wanted to go and the music that we both were inspired by. So. Hmm. That's really interesting. And uh, what was it one precise moment that simply influenced what you're doing for the rest of your career? Actually, I had, when uh, when I started a band in school early on, the feeling that I got that I accomplished something, uh, it was pretty incredible. You know, I didn't I didn't do a lot of things well as a child. Had uh, I struggled with school and everything, and uh, music was just one thing that I was able to do, and I did it pretty well, and I got the recognition for it. So it that just uh, inspired me and kept me on this journey. Mm, that is rather interesting as well, too. And of course, we also got. Um... We also got uh, Jerry Fanfarelli, who's um, second second on the left as well, too. He's um, the guitarist and lead singer. And um, and Jerry, you've uh, had a really good following as well, too. You've been, um, you know, doing this for 50 years, love a doo-wop and everything else. And you also, um, you know, put together Jukebox 45. And you had some great stories as well, too, we were talking earlier. And, um, you know, tell us how you got started. Well, at a very young age, uh, I started, uh, my interest was peaked when my aunt Celeste, uh, used to have her uh, 45 records. Uh, we lived in a two family house. So my grandparents lived downstairs with my aunt and we lived upstairs. So she would come home and pop these 45 records on and I would hear them. So I'd run downstairs and I'd listen. And at that time I was not a musician, but I, I knew early on that these songs were, were very powerful emotionally, you know, and I, I had no idea, you know, what love was or anything at that time. I was maybe seven or eight years old. But I knew that these songs were were strong, and um, I didn't know it at the time. But it was uh, preparing the way, paving the way for what we now have as our premier fifties and sixties doo-wop band, Jukebox Forty Five. Uh, but my dad was uh, a musician; he was a pianist, um, and you know, like I said, I was influenced heavily by him and by all the uh, records that I was listening to, all these various artists, uh, you know, the Decrees, like you mentioned before. Uh, Larry Chance and the Earls, uh, Fred Paris and the Five Satins. Fred was from New Haven, Connecticut, the same town that I grew up in. So, you know, um, his name was passed around quite a bit. That's rather interesting as well. And uh, what was it one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Well, I'd have to say that the, the influencing moment was when... Uh, Believe it or not, when 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 the Beatles came to America, <laughs> uh, 
wanted to watch the Ed Sullivan show in the, at night, and it was a school night, so my parents said, no, you guys have to go to bed. It was 8 o'clock, I think. And I begged them to watch the show, and then finally they let me, uh, they saw the door was cracked open, so I ran out. They said, okay, you can sit and watch. So my sister and I sat in front of the black and white television and watched the Beatles do their performance on the Ed Sullivan show, and I said, wow, this is what I really want to be doing. You know, I really enjoy, I think I'm going to enjoy this. And I hadn't even played yet. I wasn't even a musician yet. Something that I was going to aspire towards. <laughs> How do you like that? You got your choice of who do you want to emulate? Who who do you who who's your favorite Beatle? Was it John, Paul, George, or Ringo? Or if it was the fifth Beatle, you can mention that. So. <clears throat> I, I I like Paul. I, I like Paul, the bass player. I, I don't know why. I just he just uh, resonated with me. You know. Okay. That's rather interesting. And then, of course, we got uh, Paul Scongio, the uh, vocalist and keyboardist, um, next over. And uh, Paul, tell us uh, how you got started. Uh, I, I started, uh, oh, God, when I was about six or seven years old. I woke up one morning at uh, Christmas time, and there was one of those little Emmy organs under the tree. You know, the kind that you turn a switch on. It sounded like you were about to um, vacuum your, your, your rug. You used to have the motor inside it. <laughs> Everything was like an ear organ, you know. We started doing that. And um, as time went on, um, got more and more interested in different types of music, not just different types, but how the music was well put together. Uh, so I got into a lot of orchestration. And, you know, back then, uh, the instruments that they were using back then was so very, very expensive. Um, as time went on, the instruments that I needed to kind of uh, to do what I wanted to do um, got very affordable. And I started getting into um, more and more into soundtracks and, and things of that sort. I love orchestration. I just love orchestration. Um, when uh, a few years back, my wife bought me a library of orchestrated sounds that I could use uh, any way that I wanted to. Um, and to be totally honest, I've been through quite a few different venues, of different types of music. But um, I was about done, honestly. The music business, you know, sometimes is not very, very easy. And I was kind of worn out. Uh, and then when Jerry had called, um, it it was like a, a re renew, renewed life in, in music. And I was able to take some of the orchestration and put it to what we do. You know, the music itself is, um, it needs no introduction. People hear this, this music, it makes them feel good. It gets right into their hearts. And then when Jerry called and said, this is what I'm doing, I, I, I climbed on board. And, um, it, we do the music very, very close to the original recording. And then we put a little spin on it too, a little bit of orchestration in there too, kind of update it a little bit. Hmm. So uh, all kind of came together, um, you know, and we're really enjoying ourselves. We complement each other musically as well. Hmm. You do complement guys as well too. And, um, and, and of course, uh, what was, and of course you talked about uh, some soundtracks and everything hmm. else. What are some of your favorite soundtracks, you know, it comes to movies and everything else? Right, right. It. Um, I started to get into a lot of Broadway and Phantom of the Opera, and um, I started to do a, my own Broadway show, and um, it was very nice. It was a lot of lot of work though, just in order to get out there and, and perform um, my own show. I had to set up my own equipment, so on and so on. So it got to be a little bit, uh, you know, too much. But um, that is really, honest to God, that's where my heart was um, in that kind of performance. There's so many very, very talented people up on that stage. Uh, very, very underrated, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly is as well, too. We're glad to have you on board. And then finally, we've got uh, Al Floyd. And uh, Al, don't be shy. Come on over here. We want to see your face. Okay. Yeah, squeeze on over. Let let Al in, okay? And um, and Jerry, if you want, maybe just want to sit up front and show who's the boss, a leader. You can do so, too. So, <laughs> And Al, you're a, you're a drummer and a baritone as well, too. And um, you've been you've been doing this for quite some time. And, um, and uh, also, tell us how you got started. Um. My family is a, we're a family of musicians. My parents are were gospel singers, and um, my older brother was a drummer. My sister was a violinist. My other brother was a trombone player. And um, my parents was it was a requirement for us to take music lessons. We lived in a project, but my parents scraped up enough to make sure that we were trained in music, and. Um, I had my own niche because it was always 
uh, Motown playing in the house and jazz. And I was uh, drawn to more like a Stevie Wonder and the Kinks and mm. the British Invasion groups, stuff like that. And then um, I joined the marching band and just took off from there. Mm. That's very interesting. And uh, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into doing what you're doing for the rest of your career? Stevie Wonder, when he came out with his uh, his first song, Fingertips. Yep, and um, <clears throat> it blew me away when I heard it. And, um, um, I started, I liked my, Miles Davis, and um, that was where it came from, my roots. Mm, okay. That's, that's, and I was just thinking about Miles Davis, you know, being one of your favorites. And what are your thoughts on Bitches Brew, one of his uh, great, greatest classics? Oh, that's a classic, you know. Boo. Okay. All right. I think we're um, kind of frozen here. And uh, we're talking with um, Al Floyd, the drummer and baritone. Yeah, and, uh... <clears throat> okay. All right. Al, go ahead. I think you cut out for a minute. Uh, Al, go ahead. Continue what you're saying. Um, we're talking about Bitches Brew. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. That was like the blend of, he was, that was when Miles was going into rock and he was doing, like, that's when he first came involved with fusion. And um, I found it to be very interesting. Yeah, I was very young at the time, but it was something that grabbed my ear, caught my ear. Okay. That's rather that's uh I like that as well too. With all you guys coming together as well too as one such influence. We'll talk about uh jukebox forty five and more as well too. Uh, Jerry Fanfarelli and the rest of the gang. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Show dot com, powered by Soundcraft Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson -Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries. Two strangers, one target where truth is illusion and those you love would be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's Gar, great reviews. And Eve Eleven enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for it goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms. Heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Also heard on HamiltonRadio.net every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, and a few networks and platforms coming soon. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here at Jerry Fanfarelli, the um the, the master of jukebox 45 doo op memories on the Mike Widener show, flanked by Joe Carver, Paul Scurgio, and also Al Floyd as well, too. So um, so before we talk about uh, the CD, which is out, we encourage everybody to buy today and um and and, and tell us about the CD and how'd you guys all come together? Let's um hear from everybody. Well, I guess um, <clears throat> in reference to the CD, um, I had those songs in my mind uh, for quite a while. Uh, I knew which ones I wanted to put on there for the doo-wop memories. These are the songs that are most memorable uh, that I think people really uh, enjoy listening to. And they all include uh, our vocal harmonies, which we showcase on the CD. 
Um, so, you know, we had these, uh, had the idea for these songs and uh, we went into the studio uh, fairly well rehearsed, but uh, we didn't realize we were going to do all 14 songs in one shot. Wow. 14 in, was it, is that like one take or is it just like in one day? No, 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 no. We had several takes for each song, but we did it in one session. Like wow. we came in early in the morning and we left late at night and we had put down, uh, we had laid down 14 tracks times three takes. Yeah. So that was a lot of work. We were just on a roll and everybody was gelling. Uh, we all felt comfortable um, and so we just kept rolling with it, and uh, we did all 14. Uh, the next CD that we do, uh, which will come up pretty fairly soon, um, we're going to not do 14 all in one, one shot. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, you guys in agreement? are you guys in agreement on all that, or should you push it to 15 yeah. or 16 or say 13 is enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am in agreement. We, we don't need to do 14 next time. But it was a joy. It was, it was fun. A labor of love. I should say. <laughs> and, and Paul, what are your thoughts? Do you want to do 14, 15, or 13? What's your take? Uh, I, I think 12, 12, 13 is probably a, a good limit. Um, again, you know, the music that we've done, um, we, we knew it very, very well. We knew it so well. We jived because everybody was already up to speed. So it, it probably wasn't as much work as maybe the, the, the next guy, you know, uh, the next band. But um, from what I remember, we did um, orchestra. We did uh, all of the instruments first, and then we went back and we did all of the vocals afterward. Um, and I, it really wasn't. I mean, it was it was work definitely, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, like picking up that fifty pound weight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything just plays for us. Mm -hmm. and and of course jerry can attest to that it's like jerry lifting up 50 pounds is no problem for you it's just like you know it was kind of hard you know picking those it's like you know the basis of 14 songs and um it was a bass that was just you know you know something sentimental or was it just like you know well known sort of thing like you know you know tell us behind the genesis of uh choosing those 14 particular songs like you got on the back like at the hop can't we be sweethearts once in a while rock around the clock you know 14 there's like so many of them so <laughs> bases on those 14 well you know we after i listened to these songs um i knew that at some point in time i wanted to perform these songs uh, on the cd on a cd and we hadn't even gotten doug james on the saxophone yet so he came in later and laid down his tracks uh, after we did all the initial setup all the initial work and uh, so that was an additional, uh, you know, two, two or three sessions, two, two sessions, I guess it was. And um, but, you know, he did a brilliant job with it. I mean, we really enjoyed having him do it. And the songs just came out. I thought they came out great. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as the song choices, you know, we we had quite a, a library of the oldies and songs. Uh, but when we went to the studio, we started, Jerry already had a good idea of what the song should be. And so we discussed it and, you know, you just narrow down uh, three hours worth of music to a, to a CD's worth. And these were really the choice picks uh, and the picks that people would so easily recognize. You know, they're just so iconic, the songs are. And uh, so that's what the, uh, that's what the CD is. You know what I think happens too is um, uh, we, we never did an album before. And we did a lot of rehearsing, you know, before yeah. any of this happens. Uh, and you, you kind of surprise yourself when you get into the studio and you start doing something like this. You just don't realize how well um, you, you, things could sound and how, how nicely they can come together. And um, when you do that, you want, when that happens, you want to do it more and more. And uh, it, it really, they came together very, very nicely with all of us. We did the, did the recording at the Coffee House Studio in Middletown, Connecticut. And Mike Arafe was the record producer. I co-produced the CD with him, but he has a really good knack for laying the tracks down and, and getting them lined up and uh, doing what he does best, you know. So he really, he really is, was very instrumental in the way the CD came out. Mm. 
That is certainly interesting. Of course, you know, 50, 100 years and everything else combined. You've been doing for um 50 years, Jerry, as well, too. Maybe some of the, um, you know, the highlights you have had, who you play with and everything else. And I mean, I mean, 50 years is like, you know, that is just a heck, heck of a resume right there. Well, when I started playing guitar, I was eight, eight or nine. And uh, I think I was eight years old. And I wanted to have a little band. And so by the time I was 10, I had enough lessons under my belt to have like a garage band. And um, our first job was at a Cub Scout Blue and Gold dinner. <laughs> and I think we got uh, a meatball sub for payment. <laughs> You're making me hungry already, guys. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, now we get a meatball sub and 10 bucks. No. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, send one over to me after this. How's that? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, over the years, I, I played just about every kind of music genre there is. You know, I had a jazz band for several years, um, the rhythm and blues band. I, I had another oldies band that we did 50s, 60s, and 70s. But this one is by far the, the, the best group. I mean, it really is the best group that I've ever played in and played with. These guys are all tremendous musicians and they're all my close friends. That's that's the other thing. You know, we all get along with one another. We've all been through that, uh, uh, you know, all of the drama that takes place when you're younger. Who's better than you know the other guy? And we have we have no egos. Uh, we leave them at the door. We come in. Uh, and incidentally, this is our studio where we rehearse. Uh, and uh, so we come into this studio on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. And we get right down to business and uh, it's just great making music with these guys. Love it. It mm -hmm. is. I agree. Mm -hmm. And and then Al, can you attest to that? So it's like, you know, you can jump in anytime you want and you don't have to hide behind the camera. And <laughs> come, come on. I, I, I always see, I always see your smiling face out there. Al, you keep disappearing over this way. Come on. You can join. <laughs> I just say, I just want to say this about Al. When, when I first started playing with him, Al didn't sing a note. Honestly, I, I am just blown away by how far he's come in such a short period of time. He's just got that that beautiful, beautiful voice. As you can as you can tell, he was like he's okay. He's not even saying it, you know. And uh, uh, just he, you can't imagine uh, he has uh, really come a long, long way in a short period of time, okay. and he deserves a pat on the back. <laughs> and a right. I, I agree. I do agree. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> What's your question, Bob? I'm sorry. But we, we got a little Mike. Mike. Yep. Yeah, Mike, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, okay, I, I, I think that's been all uh, ans answered as well, too. And, uh, of course, you know, we talked about uh, Jerry playing 50 years and uh, everything else. And, of course, you guys have been around for quite some time. Maybe you can share a story or two about, you know, who, who what was the most memorable moment and who you mem who you play with uh, famously and um, infamously and um, where you've gone and everything else, even who you're courted with. And, of course, you know, Doug James, who unfortunately is not uh, be able to uh, join us today, he was a uh, founding member of the Room Full of Blues and play with uh, Jimmy Vaughn, Colin James, Pat Benatar. And, of course, you know, he also play with uh, Stevie Ray, Junior Walker, Money Waters, and more. And, um, you know, guys like that, it's like, you know, you know, you, you guys play in that kind of pedigree as well, too. Like, you know, you know, it's some, you know, memorable moments and, uh, you know, who you play with and everything. So it's like, you know, you know, Jerry is like, you know, he played with some greats as well, too. I think we talked um, off the air as well, too, one point about Doc Severinsen. It's like, you know, uh, he retired recently. It's like, boy, it's like, you know, he's been going for a long time. You know, Doug, uh, um, just going back a little bit, uh, I had met Doug, or I had known Doug since the late night, 1960, 69, when he was with Room Full of Blues and Duke Robillard. And I used to go see them all the time in New Haven when they played at uh, 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 Toad's Place, and which is a famous uh, <clears throat> music venue. And our paths would periodically cross back and forth. And, uh, you know, we, uh, quite a bit of time would go by and I wouldn't see him or hear from him. And then, you know, I'd be in New York City uh, and I'd walk into a nightclub and oh, there they are playing, you know? So then we'd, I'd see him another five years later and uh, most recently, uh, when I was, I saw him at a venue near where I live, and uh, we ran into each other. And I, he said to me, "You know, what are you doing?" And um, I said, "Yeah, we're we're going to do a, uh, we're doing an album in the studio." 
And he offered, he said, you know, if you uh, would like, I, I'd love to put um, put the sax on it for you. So I said, man, I, I would love to have that, you know. And so that's how he originally got uh, started playing with us. Um, he enjoyed he enjoyed the music that we were playing. I mean, he played with a lot of heavyweights, you know. I think he played with Eric Clapton on uh, in Madison Square Garden. And he was Stevie Ray Vaughan's sax player when Stevie was alive. Mm -hmm. So he's played with a lot of, you know, professional guys. And um, we were kind of surprised that he uh, wanted to, you know, join the group with us. But he puts, he adds so much to the to the music, you know, his, his touch. He plays baritone and tenor. So uh, as you, you'll hear it on the CD, he did two, you know, two saxophones. That is rather interesting. And you guys talked about uh, you're having upcoming release as well, too. And um, we'll talk about that in just one minute. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by official sponsor, The Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Moses, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the um, the, the quartet of the Jukebox 45 uh, doo-wop memories, Jerry Fanfarelli and the gang after this time up. We're back with Jukebox 45, do Up Memories on the Mike Wagner Show, Jerry Fanfarelli, and also Joe Carver, Paul Scurgio, and also Al Floyd as well, too. Jug Doug James, another member who's not able to join us as well, too. And you guys have talked about an upcoming release. And, um, you know, tell us a bit about that. Uh, on the upcoming release, um, the CD that we're going to do next, probably. Yeah. Oh, you mean the next CD is coming up. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, I've, I've had some ideas about um, putting together another CD. Um, we have so many songs that we have in our master set list. Uh, there's over 250 all totaled. And um, usually when we need to go out and do a show, it's usually about an hour and a half. And we do about a hundred, we do about uh, 49 songs for the show. Um, and so some of the so songs that are in the show, we, we were not able to put on this CD. So um, I'm looking to the new CD that we want to do with having some of the other songs that we do quite well. Um, you know, uh, Emil Stuccio and the classics uh, Till Then is one that comes to mind. Um, and a couple of other ones, you know, so we're trying to get uh, an order in which we're going to be doing the songs. And then I guess we're going to start looking to do uh, some more studio work, you know. It takes a lot of time, though, to and it's it's quite an effort on everybody's part to uh, come to rehearsal and uh, learn the parts that we have to learn. Um, and it's not it's not always fun and games. I mean, we we really do. It's work. You know, we have to work at it. But when when we do finally finish it, you know, it's great. So we're really looking forward. I would say we might be getting into the studio probably around the holidays, right after Christmas. And uh and start working on the next one so we'll be sure and let you know when that one comes out for sure we will certainly do that in the meantime where can we find all your music at and uh where can we um you know catch you guys uh perform at the present time um our uh music is currently being processed to go on to some of the platforms like spotify and cd, uh, baby. CD baby amazon music but uh we're, we haven't gotten through all the red tape yet um, so right now you can order the CDs directly through me from our website, which is on Facebook, Jukebox 45 Show Band. And then our contact information is right there. Um, and you can order the CD directly through me. Okay. Uh, but we're hoping that before the end of the year, um, the music will be on all of those platforms that I just mentioned. Uh, we're just, it's just such a bunch of red tape to go through to get <laughs> uh, the Harry Fox Agency in New York City so that um, we can uh, do these covers and play them and sell them without any problem. And everybody who was uh, responsible for making those songs gets their royalties and their just recognition. So that's all been taken care of. And uh, you know, that's, that's one, one hurdle that we had to get over before we can actually uh, distribute these CDs. Okay. All right. We'll certainly check that out with uh, Jerry Fanfarelli and the rest of the Jukebox uh, 45 show band here on the Mike Wagner Show and um, in, in just a couple more things. And, um, you, you know, what else can you expect me in 2022 20, and 23 and beyond besides with your upcoming release and everything else? I'm sorry. I didn't get that much. No, uh, what? Uh, what, what else can we expect from you guys in uh, 2022 oh, and 23 and beyond? 
So we played uh, we play a lot of the uh, outdoor summer concert series uh, for the Parks and Rec throughout Connecticut, and uh, we did some uh, did a show in Queens in New York uh, recently. We did uh, uh, the Westerly Yacht Club, which is uh, a doo wop uh, sock hop. So those are all. We were pretty busy all summer. Uh, one week we played five days in a row. Wow. And uh, yeah, so we played down in Greenwich, Connecticut, Old Saybrook. Then we came up to go to Hartford. Then we went back down to Durham, Connecticut, and then we did North Haven. Uh, the North Haven show was a great show. So c- upcoming, you know, we're we're planning on uh, doing some Christmas shows this year, uh, and we have uh, things usually slow down a little bit right after the holidays. Uh, and so we're going to be spending some time in the studio working on, on the next CD uh, and um, polishing up our music. And then come springtime, um, we've got a lot more uh, of those Parks and Rec shows lined up and getting ready to, to do that. So mm-hmm. and we also, uh, yeah, we're going to also be playing um, in other locations throughout uh, the East Coast. We have a, a, a producer down in, um, in uh, Hazleton, Pennsylvania who is interested in putting some shows together down there for us. Um, so we're looking forward to that whenever that comes together. And I just wanted to mention also that um, a lot of our, um, or, or many of the songs that are on our CD, we're getting airplay in New York City. Nice. Um, the Alex Augustine uh, Rock Rhythm and Blues show on Thursday afternoons, uh, which <clears throat> co-hosted by uh, Jackie Nunez. That's uh, rememberthenradio.com, and they they play our they play our songs. Um, we have Bob Hennessy's West Side Coffee Cafe in Manhattan on the West Side. He plays our, our cuts in the morning. Uh, we have uh, another station, WESU, in uh, Wesleyan University. That's Jim Santa Barbara and his um, Wax Museum show. That's one of the longest running duop shows uh, in the country, I think. Wow, man! And he plays cuts from our our, our CD. And most recently, uh, we have uh, the Rock and Richard show at WNHU is starting to play some of our cuts as well. So that's, you know, starting to get some traction, which is good. Mm-hmm. And we're certainly looking for more as well, too. And uh, guys, who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Al, you can start. <laughs> really, it's my uh, older brother who's a drummer. And um, I learned everything from him. And he went to Vietnam, left his drum set at home, and little does he know, it probably killed me once he is, but I just got jammed. (laughs) Invited a lot of my friends over and (coughs) go to the basement and just kick it all the time. So, yeah, I learned a lot from my brother professionally. Okay. And then, then, Paul, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Um. Well, when I was young, my mom always pushed me forward. She always said, you can do it. You can do it. And, um, I, you know, it just uh, it's just the way it was, too. I <laughs> find, out, find out where my comfort zone was at the time and then push forward from there. And uh, she just always said, you know, you can do it. Um, a lot of times when you're new at something, you don't believe you can do it. But it just always worked out, and it gave you the opportunity to learn a lot about yourself and about your future, and uh, kind of kind of where you're headed. Uh, and uh, you know, you can't go wrong by doing it from the heart. You do something from the heart; it just fits right into place, just like anything else. Mm-hmm. And certainly does too. And uh, Joe, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? I would have to say that would be my father. Um, just. The, in introducing me to music and okay okay letting well of course my parents were also in, influenced me heavily but most recently though uh, I was influenced by the <laughs> Duprees of all uh, people um, when we first put this group together we formulated the group I was interested in doing um, a song from them, and I wanted to get the original chart that uh, they had so we can work off of that, you know. And I sent them an email, and not ever really thinking that a group like them would ever respond back to me. But lo and behold, a couple of days later in my email, uh, I got uh, an email back from them and saying, 
Uh, Jerry, uh, this is the first time we've ever been asked for this song. Uh, please use your discretion and don't give it out to everybody. <laughs> this, this is what this is our the original chart when we first recorded it way back in 1963. Wow! And I was so taken aback by that that these guys in their busy lives and everything would take the time to, uh, you know, answer my email and and show an interest. And they, they said, um, you know, one thing we want to do, have you do is um, when you do the song, uh, we would like to hear it. And so we did it. And it's on it's on the CD. You can hear it. And, um, you know, they, they really enjoyed it. They said they loved it. So um, those guys have influenced me. And they still do. A lot of these musicians, they're, they're very down to earth. Larry Chance is a wonderful guy. Um, I can talk to him. Uh, periodically here and there and he uh, came to see one of our shows yeah we were down in Greenwich and um so you know these guys that uh made it to the top you know you would think that they wouldn't have time for a group like us but they do yeah. it just shows you the caliber of people that they are or they they came up from you know mm. I that give them a credit too a lot of the time how long, how long ago has it been since uh, they recorded a lot of these original um, original songs and they're still out there and they still sound exactly the way they did when they recorded things originally. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and from older musicians too, to still have the vocal chops and to this day, it's, it's amazing. Mm. And certainly is too. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Any one of you can start. Work on your craft. <laughs> Keep it up. Never think you have arrived or you're as good as you're going to get. Keep striving to do better all the time. Yep. Yeah, and you know, I, I think you're right. Now. You, know, you got to shoot for the stars. And if you land on the moon, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, a good really, one. Actually, Mike, you know, when we first started this group, um, I envisioned, I had a vision and it's still, it's starting to come to fruition now. And it's it's slow and, and forthcoming, but I can see the group coming together, and we're doing much nicer shows now. And um, at first, I I didn't really think that we would ever make it to do large shows, but I never gave up. I kept saying, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and you just never look back. Just keep looking forward, and you will get there. Mm -hmm. And I think. You know, a lot of it is um, we all have great faith. Uh, and um, so, there are just certain things that you can't control. It just happens, you know. And I believe that uh, in this case, it happened just right because we complement each other in our performance and in our music and in our vocals. You know, the vocals just came together so perfectly. Uh, some things, you know, it's just, just a real blessing. And um, we Absolutely. appreciate that blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and and Joe, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, get a focus on what you want to do. Uh, just stay focused on it. Put the work in. Don't, you know, don't think like Al said, don't think it's just going to happen. You're going to have to put the work in. But if you keep working, we're seeing we're seeing the results now. And it's just proves that yeah if you work hard enough and you keep working at it uh, you will see good results and uh, that's my advice just keep working at it put the work in mm -hmm. and certainly great advice and you guys d you guys are all amazing once again we're at um duke bot 45 uh show band featuring uh jerry fanfarelli joe carver paul scungio and al floyd here on the mike winner show guys very big thank you for your time you guys have been fantastic learned a lot from you looking forward again soon keep us up to date keep in touch love to have you back once again what's your website how do people contact you and where can people purchase or check out your works and especially check out your shows well, we have our Facebook page, which is very popular. Uh, currently, we have over 2,550 people following us on a daily basis. And that is Jukebox 45 Show Band on Facebook. And we also have our worldwide web page, which is jukebox45.us. And that tells a little bit about the group and how we, what our mission statement is and where, you know, what we're about and what we like to do and what inspires us. Um, so those are the two places you can get in touch with us. 
And uh, on the Facebook page is all our contact information, including my phone number and email address. So if there's anybody out there who's interested in hiring the band, then most certainly they can do it that way. Okay. And we'll certainly check those out, including music. Once again, guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. We wish you all best. And guys, Jerry, Joe, Paul, and Al, you have a great future ahead, guys. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Mike.